Our scripture this morning is from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who he was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for him in the inn. The word of God for the people of God. And I give thanks for each and every person that's up here today. Don't you as well, too? A, a cantata is a, a way to just worship God. It's a way to tell a story as well, too, through song, through instrumentation, through just singing out and through narration. As we hear these words, words we've been familiar with, most of us, our entire lives, the story of Jesus. It's a story we've known. It's a story we've told. But sometimes when we hear it in a different way presented to us, it's a story that can move us maybe in a way we never imagined before. So I pray and I continue to pray that you are moved by today's cantata as well. Um, but when I think of this music, it just has moved me so much and sometimes it makes me speechless. And I know a pastor speechless is amazing. Um, but then I, I hear the scripture that Mike read for us, the scripture of a child who was born and wrapped in cloths and laid in a manger, in that humble beginning. But it's also a joyous beginning. It was a baby boy. It's a boy. You know, Mary and Joseph had to be excited. They had to be celebrating. But this wasn't just any baby boy. It's a baby boy who would change the entire world, the son of God. Imagine that for a second. Imagine what it would be like to give birth, number one. Think of your own child, but imagine giving birth to the Son of God. I couldn't even imagine. Out in the fields, the angels proclaimed out to the shepherds, and the shepherds come running into town. The shepherds wanted to know him. A star appeared in the sky, and the wise men, the magi, the kings, whatever tradition you grew up with, they saw it. They followed the star because they wanted to know Jesus as well. Today, I think the world needs to know Jesus a whole lot more than what we currently know. We need to experience Jesus a whole lot more than we do today. The world still needs to know Jesus. You know, over the past few weeks during this uh, season of Advent, we've had a sermon series where we spent time looking at the, the whole birth narrative as a love story, of God's love story towards us. And we looked at God courting us at first, God reaching out to each and every one of us, even before we know God exists, even before we realize there is a God, God has been reaching out to us. And then, just like in a relationship, we realize God's there, been reaching his hand out to us, and we grab that hand. And we say, yes, like we would to a wedding proposal. Yes, I'll marry you. Yes, I'll walk with you. And at that point, God forgives us, God loves us more and more, and then we take that hand and we walk into the future together, hand in hand, forevermore, just like a couple does, walk hand in hand forevermore. And now there's a baby. Who here has children of their own? A lot of us have children. Would you say a baby changes your life? There's laughter. It isn't even, yes, of course, no, there's laughter. Of course a baby changes your life like you wouldn't believe. How about grandbabies? Do they change your life at all? Oh, yeah. We smile when we say grandbabies. Children, it's like, oh, grandbabies, yes. If God could ever invent a way to skip right to the grandchildren, we'd be set. You know, I don't think there's a parent who would say their life hasn't been changed by a child. You know, I'm sure Jesus' birth changed the lives of both Mary and Joseph. And this same child will change your life if you let him. You know, any child is a gift from God. But this one child 
is a gift of life everlasting. He's a gift freely given from God out of love, a gift which brings us hope and love and joy and peace, a gift which changed the world, and it started on that one night 2,000 years ago. That one night, the angels proclaimed, the shepherds witnessed, and the wise men followed the star. That one night, a child was born, and that one night changed the world forever. Amen. One night stands out in the chronicle of human history. One night stands out as a testament to divine love. One night stands out as the moment heaven came down to earth. It was a miraculous night. It was a glorious night. It was a holy night.
the tapestry of the first Noel is seamlessly woven between the incomprehensible and the commonplace. The heir of all heaven's riches takes on the weight of all earth's poverty. The mentions of angels and shepherds, magi, a star in the east, and a manger will forever be connected to the realms of the miraculous. Oh, the mystery of the wondrous, boundless, timeless love of God. The majestic, amazing, miraculous story of Christmas all comes down to this. God so loved the world that he sent his only son. The word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the one and only one who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Noel, born is the king. Historically, there was only one first Noel. All the Noels to follow were celebrations of that extraordinary holy night. However, there are many who may never experience a true Noel, a true Christmas, a celebration of the coming of the Savior. Christmas begins when the Christ of Christmas is born in the hearts of those who seek Him. He comes to us. He moves through us not because of our merit, but because of His mercy. This could be your time to experience the miracle of Christmas. This could be your time to come to that hallowed manger ground. This could be your time to behold His glory. Come and worship. You will not be turned away. This could be your first Noel.
my brothers and sisters in Christ, may the hope, love, and joy we receive through our faith in Christ Jesus bring us peace this Christmas season. Amen.